Guys, I'm gonna take you through my process of doing final coats and finish work on these gas tanks. Obviously we did the paint and body work, uh, the primer and body work. So now we're gonna do what is the final stages. So for this step, I'm basically taking a 600 grit wet sand and getting the, the final primer as smooth as I could possibly get. That way we can go ahead and do a good top coat. This is one step that if you do not do, your paint's gonna look extremely lumpy. It's gonna look trashy and it just won't give the final luster. If you, if you do just a primer and a scuff and don't do this final sand, you're gonna get a lot more orange peel. So this is one stage, you know, it's a very simple process. You just take your hand. A lot of people use a little soft pad. I like my hand on a curvy tank because I can actually feel. And then uh, you basically take it and just rub until it feels as smooth as you can possibly get. If you feel any roughness, go over that area a little bit better. Like, and just wrap it up basically as good as you can possibly get it. Now, I feel good about this one. I put a few minutes into it before I started the video, so I was almost done. You know, I basically just take the final rinse, and all I got is a warm water, warm soapy water solution here. Nothing special. Um, I just you want to not get any contaminants in your in your rinse. I mean, there's a million ways you could do this. I uh, just this is my process. I like it's very simple. A little bit of caveman like, but we did a scuff on the bottom. And we are going to let it dry thoroughly and we're going to do a final spray. So, as you can see, this is already glassy just looking at it from a primer standpoint. Now, once it dries, I'll do a final look over and we'll do some spray techniques. I'll show you how to mix the paint, I'll show you how to clean the guns, I'll show you how to spray wet sand, decal all that in this one video. All right, guys, next step in this painting process, of course. You want your gun to be clean. I've already done that. I've prepped my gun, that's ready. Second thing, I do use the 3M disposable cups. Basically just wanna make sure your cup has a liner in it. Get that ready. I am mixing a PPG shop line. It's a direct gloss acrylic enamel. Um, it's a great high quality product from PPG and I love it, I'm sorry. Direct gloss acrylic urethane, apologize. And I have, it's a four to one to one. So it means it's gonna be four parts of paint, one part of hardener and one part of reducer. So I already know about what it takes. I gotta spray two tanks and a handlebar. So I already know where I need to be on my lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing that. I'm gonna go to the number three, probably a little more about three and a half. And same thing, I need to match it three and a half on the second two lines. Then from there, basically you just mix it up and go from there, you put your cap on. Very simple, these, these cups, you just do a good stir, mix your product, make sure everything's good. And you don't need to strain, you don't need to do anything because the lids actually have the mixing caps the strainers in the caps, which is a great feature because you don't need to go through a million mixing cups to do this process anymore. If you look here, it has a tiny fine mesh in the cap, kind of hard to see, but very simple. So once you mixed, you simply toss your stick, put the cap, lock it, drain the rest of the cleaner out of your gun, into my waistband, lock it on, latch it, and you are ready to spray now. Very cool, very easy. All right guys, next step in this painting process, I just ran a tack rag over both of my tanks to try to get out any little bit of trash on it. That eliminates a little bit of specks in your paint when you're done. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm in an amateur booth. A good ventilation, but I don't have a filter system 
on my intake side, I just have it on the exhaust side to keep my neighbors from having overspray. So I do have trash come through. It's pollen season, so I'm getting pollen right now. It's really no fun, but that's okay because we're going to show you guys how to get through it. So I'm going to go ahead and kick my ventilation on, spray a couple coats, show you guys the three steps of coats. And then once we get to the shop tomorrow, we're going to do the final wet sand. We're going to do a final polish. We're going to install some decals and I'm going to have some beautiful 350X tanks and handlebars. So here we go. Let me kick on the ventilation and get this rolling. So that's a pretty good lay down. I don't see any fish eyes, but as you can see, first coat, you always have some thin spots and you can usually see a little bit more trash from this side. You can catch a little bit of it if you look right in this area, which is fine because the second and third layer kind of buries the trash in and then wet sanding and polishing process obviously finishes it out. So that's step one of the paint process We'll wait our eight to 10 minutes, let it flash, and go with step two. Eight minutes later, round two.
that was our second coat. This is probably almost considered sufficient for some people. People would be like, ah, this is fine, I'll take it. I do a third coat, that way I can wet sand, I can color buff, and you can see I get a little bit of trash. We don't panic about that because I'll show you how to undo that tomorrow. We're gonna color sand, we're gonna polish, decal, and these two tanks are gonna be incredible. Step three, final layer. So, got our final layer. Now, you always want to look over your final layer before you clean your gun and all that good stuff for thin spots. You got to remember, paint is like sunlight. It only goes in a straight line. So, if you're going to be painting from like here, that means paint is not coming up underneath. Paint's not going to come up on the lips. If you're not shooting down to do a fan action, you're probably going to have thin spots in different areas. I do so many tanks, I kind of know which directions to go with it, but I always look it over for a final time for thin spots or just dry areas, especially on white. White is so hard to see with the reflection, but pretty simple stuff. Um, I'm going to gun cleaning next. All right, so now we're finished with our paint job. Probably gonna do the most important part here, clean your gun. With these 3M disposable cups, you basically just want to pull the trigger, which allows the paint to come from the top area above the filter, the filter mesh down back into the bottom. Then you're going to disconnect. You basically take out the cartridge and the lid, toss it in the trash. This is ready for the next round. I have my little mustard bottle here filled with just a general purpose solvent. I'm going to clean up my hand just a little bit. Then you want to start running it through your gun. Uh, I have a paint waste drum right here. And you just basically spray and spray and spray. I like to douse my whole gun because it gets oversprayed throughout the process. And squeeze your trigger. I have a couple little paint cleaning tips and stuff like this. So I will go through the throat and just clean it up a few times. And I'll do the tip itself just that allows it to get any little bit of residue off of it and from there pretty much tips clean um, I do occasionally about every if I had to guess every tenth paint I will take this gun completely apart because they do have residue that this just won't push out so I'm gonna push a little pressure I like to back flush the tip a little bit because it, it, it just swirls a little bit do a good dump and what I do I leave a little bit in the gun that way if I do have anything it will not dry up and turn into chunky paint so we have these cool little tips that come with it these come with the 3m disposables and it now you have thinner in your gun it's clean it's dry it prevents debris and whatever else from going in it 
and I am pretty much ready to spray next round.